I'm excited to talk to you today about building tabs with adaptive cards. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Search API uh, to search through different resources and display them in an adaptive card tab within Microsoft Teams. Uh, just a little bit about me. My name is Ramin Ahmadi. I work at Content Cloud based in London. I've been a software developer for a really long time since SharePoint 2003 came out and I've never stopped learning and trying new things. You can follow me on social media with the links you can see um, here. Uh, now let's focus on adaptive card tabs. Uh, as we know, tabs are just web pages embedded in Microsoft Teams. Uh, there are simple HTML iframe tags that point to domains defined in the app manifest and can be added as part of a channel inside the team, group chat, or personal app for individual users. So there are a couple of ways for developing uh, Microsoft Teams tabs, uh, and, and you can have different tools and frameworks such as uh, SharePoint framework, uh, you can use Yeoman Generator for Teams or uh, Teams Toolkit, and you know you can use your favorite uh, library or uh, framework uh, like uh, React, Angular, .NET, or anything allowing you to create a web page. But you know, there are some considerations using these uh, traditional methods to build tabs. Um, sometimes the tabs and look and feel native to the rest of the teams. Uh, also, some apps uh, aren't responsive, therefore they won't work easily on mobile. Um, slow load times is another problem. Sometimes it's because of the fact that it's embedded in an iframe, uh, but that can also open up a host of other constraints depending on how uh, the web page is built. And also, there are some uh, hidden maintenance uh, and costs that you need to be aware of. But building tabs with adaptive cards, on, on the other hand, uh, would allow you to build your app uh, with ready-made UI building blocks, as simple as uh, drag and drop and edit UI elements in real time uh, that look and feel uh, native on mobile, desktop, and web. Uh, also, you can use a bot uh, as the backend, and that bot is responsible for uh, accepting requests and responding, uh, sending those adaptive cards back to the tab and render them. And of course, you can use uh, task module because this is really uh, important if you want to collect some information from the user. So this is a really good way to uh, collect those information. Uh, there are some prerequisites that you need to be aware of. You uh, need to be familiar with bot development because this is your backend and also adaptive cars and task module in Microsoft Teams. Uh, you have to register bot, as I mentioned, this is your backend and you have to register bot in Azure. And if needed, this is optional. Uh, if you need to use a single sign-on, for example, if you want to use a service like a Microsoft Graph API, you have to um, uh, uh, configure single sign-on uh, that I will show you in a minute in the demo. Also, there are some limitations. Uh, so at the moment, the page load size is limited to 80 kilobytes. So if you have an adaptive card more than 80 kilobytes, uh, it's not going to render. So if you have a complex, app, complex application or web app, uh, this is not a good approach uh, for you to use adaptive cards tabs. Um, and also there are some limitations uh, around the adaptive card features. Not all of the features are available. For example, uh, action.execute or some of the other uh, adaptive card features, uh, uh, you, you basically cannot uh, get them uh, at the moment. Uh, but you know, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Teams and adaptive card team are heavily investing in their future. And there are so many exciting features are coming to the adaptive card world, such as form validation, people pick care, or fellow menu and so on. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you uh, one of these feature, which is the people picker in the demo. Uh, and also there is no advanced layout controls. So at the moment, all of these cards sent to the tab uh, are rendered uh, vertically. So if you want uh, to have you know, multi-column layout, it's not possible at the moment, but I'm sure uh, the, there will be in the future. And also only personal tabs are supported. Um, so when you build a bot, you are able to power a number of Teams capabilities, such as bots, uh, messaging extensions. You can show dialogues known as task modules. Uh, and now you have the tabs. Uh, this is all powered by a bot as backend and adaptive card as front. Uh, 
before this, you had to spin up a, a separate web server uh, to host your app, and you had to build the front end using a, a usual set of web tools. Uh, so with a single bot backend and adaptive card, you can power everything in Teams. And this is the unified developer experience uh, that adaptive card based apps aims uh, to solve. Um, so there are some changes to the app manifest. Uh, adaptive card tabs are rendered when the content bot ID property is provided in the static tab definition. Uh, but you need to be aware of that. This is only available from uh, manifest version 1.9 or later. And you can use either a content bot, bot ID which is a specifying the adaptive card tab or a content URL, uh, which is specifying a typical hosted web content tab experience. You cannot have both at the same time. So here uh, we say instead of rendering a URL, send a message to this bot over here and that bot take, takes care of everything and send back the, uh, the, the adaptive cards to, to get rendered. Uh, and if you, if you wonder how it works, uh, so when you open a, a, a Microsoft Teams uh, tab with adaptive cards, um, it will send uh, an invoke request to your bot. Uh, so this is uh, the payload of that request. It's a tab fetch request that is uh, get, it gets sent to the bot with a bunch of information, uh, such as the tab context, conversation, some uh, information about the user. Uh, and the bot receives uh, the request and in return, it sends back a bunch of adaptive cards, and those adaptive cards uh, get rendered vertically uh, in, in your tab. Uh, so this is how it works. I will explain more in the demo. Uh, so let's go to the uh, demo, jump into the demo. Uh, but before I jump into the demo, uh, as I mentioned in the prerequisite section, uh, you need to uh, set up a bot in Azure. So I need to uh, spend a few seconds talking about the configuration. Uh, as you can see here, I'm running this bot uh, on a web app hosted in Azure. But uh, because for this demo, I wanted to use Microsoft Graph, I configured a single sign single sign on by registering an app here. Uh, so this is the app. I added some uh, permissions because I want to search through some resources uh, such as files, uh, events, messages, or some uh, SharePoint list items. So that uh, I needed some of uh, this info, uh, some of these permissions permissions that you can see here uh, and there are some other steps that you need to take to uh, set up this uh, single sign-on so this is really a uh, uh, good documentation you can follow uh, this is a really a step-by-step -step, um, you know guide that can help you uh, configure the single sign-on for your bot i will share all of these links with you after this demo uh, so back to this um, so this is the uh, application registration also, we need a, a single sign-on connection. Uh, so here we have a bunch of service providers that you can use. But for this demo, because I wanted to use Microsoft Graph, I use uh, Azure AD uh, V2. So I just set client ID, secret, uh, you know, token exchange URL, and the other uh, properties needed, the scopes that I need for uh, my application. So this is the configuration and everything behind the scene. Uh, so if we go to Microsoft Teams, uh, here I have the app running, and this is how it looks like when you first go to the tab. Uh, but before I select the sign-in button, I want to show you something. I'm going to open the developer tools uh, panel. Uh, and in the network panel, uh, if I just refresh this tab, Uh, you can see it just sent uh, an invoke request uh, to your bot. So this is the, this is some information about um, you know the context about the tab about the current user and everything. Uh, and in response, the bot is sending back back this object which is type of us. So uh, it, it provides you a, a, a signing link so you can use to sign into the app. Uh, so if I now select this button. I can just sign in and it returns to the tab and you can see it sends another uh, invoke request to your bot um, and bot in response will send 
a bunch of adaptive cards. Uh, for this sample, uh, it's just three adaptive cards. Uh, so the first one is uh, this one at the top, uh, which displays um, uh, some information about the current user, the image, the, the sign out button. This one, uh, you can uh, search through uh, different resources in Microsoft 365 uh, through this uh, uh, drop down control. Um, so here, for this is a, a button that if you click, uh, it just invoke a task module, uh, which I said, th this is a, just a, a dialogue. Uh, and if you see in the developer uh, panel, in the network panel, uh, it's a, it basically it's a request uh, of type uh, task fetch. So if I go to the payload, you can see uh, here, this is a task fetch. It's, it's sent it to uh, a bot and bot will uh, return this adaptive card task module and uh, user can interact with this and submit and if we just you know send another request to the bot and here we see some of the results so if i just close this and if i just search for something like concern if i just uh, say okay go through all of the files and select search uh, this uh, sends another request of type uh, tab submit with some data. Uh, so the data here is the, the resource type and also the keyword that I just uh, put here. Uh, and uh, the bots use Microsoft Graph API uh, to search through all of the files and find everything contains uh, this keyword. And you can see the results here. And also I can filter it here. So this is a paper picker I was talking about. It's one of the features you get uh, from the adaptive card without needing, you know, uh, using any library or uh, framework. And if I select this and just press submit, you can see just filter everything. And these are the files created by Helen. Uh, also, I can search uh, different uh, resources. Uh, and the good thing about the adaptive card is, uh, so you see each time I send this request, it, it returns a, a different adaptive card with different the UI, uh, with different icon, different set of properties. So if I just uh, search another thing uh, to search the messages, uh, you see different uh, UI with different properties. And this is really easy to create. So you can use Adaptive Card Designer, as you can see here. I use this for uh, building this UI elements. And you, after that, you get this JSON file, and you can use it for uh, sending back to the tab to get rendered uh, uh, here in Microsoft Teams. So uh, this is it. This is, a, uh, this is how it works. And after you're done, you can uh, sign out using this button. It will send another request to your bot and you will get sign out. And if you refresh the tab, you're back to the signing page. Uh, so let's just talk, talk a little bit about the code. Uh, so this is, this is the code uh, and this is your uh, bot class. Uh, so here we have different uh, type of invoke. Uh, so we have tab fetch, and tab submit, which are new. Before the adaptive card tabs, we didn't have this invoke request. Uh, before it was just you know task fetch and task uh, submit, which is uh, for task modules. Uh, and now we have tab fetch and tab submit. So the first request we get from the bot is tab fetch, and here we just we can check the token response and uh, if you uh, configure the single sign on, and if the token response is not available, you can send back an adaptive card with a signing link asking the user to sign in. Otherwise, you can uh, render the card and uh, the cards and just send another um, uh, response to to your tab. So here, uh, I'm just uh, returning three uh, adaptive cards, and as as I said, it just they, they, they rendered vertically. Uh, so th these are the three cards. Um, and also we have the adaptive cards here uh, under resources. There are a bunch of JSON files. So that, so for example, this is a, a this is the one I use for the filter uh, filters task module, and this is how uh, I use uh, the people picker. So this is really easy. As you can see here, you can just uh, say, okay, I want this um, control to render the users, and the user can search through um, uh, the available users in your tenant. Also for different uh, resources, I have different UI. So this is for drive item or the files or for events. I use uh, different 
you know, icon, different properties. And uh, under the services, we have different services, but this is the one uh, I want to talk about. This is uh, the graph service API. So when we get the token, uh, this method just, you know, set the token and it's going to um, um, basically makes this graph client uh, available so we can use that. Uh, and this is the one that get the user profile photo, and there's, this is the one I want to talk about because this is a uh, the, this is the API that we use for search through different sources. So uh, if I uh, go back to here, this is uh, a really good documentation about Microsoft Search API. Uh, with Microsoft Search API, you can uh, search different resources such as messages, events, people. Um, uh, OneDrive and SharePoint, and even you can just comp combine uh, some of these resources together and search, for example, all of the OneDrive, SharePoint uh, messages, and everything, and just return the results, um, which is really, really useful. Uh, so this is how I get the uh, results and uh, send it back to the tab. I think this is the main key, uh, th this is the key uh, features of this uh, bot. Uh, so I think that's it from, from my side. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can, and this is the useful links that you, you can see uh, and just use them if you want to learn more about adaptive cards or single sign-on or Microsoft Search and adaptive card designer, uh, I'll put it here. Uh, thank you. Over back to you, David. Awesome. Very, very cool stuff, uh, Roman. Really appreciate you sharing that. Put the links in the chat. Uh, some questions sure. there for you, I think, as well. And uh, really appreciate you showing the behind the scenes, right? Not just that how things work from the code perspective and how it looks in the browser, but really how we understand it's working under uh, behind the scenes there backstage, so to speak, in the code. So really nice work. Mm -hmm.